Hello, everyone. Dr. Victoria Skirbo here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. Today is uh, the day I'm going to be doing taroscopes, and we're going to be doing the taroscopes for the sign of Aries. That's Aries Sun, Aries Moon, Aries Rising. And as always, the Aries Taroscope um, and, you know, tar the astrology and the, the um, Reading is always uh, a good one for everyone because we're dealing with more our typical energies uh, with looking at Aries. So there are a couple of things happening. Mars, your ruling planet, starts the month in um, Leo and then shifts into Virgo on the 10th of July. Now, um, the, the um, Mars in Leo is very creative and self-expressive for you. And then once it moves into Virgo, it's about, you know, putting your nose to the grindstone, dealing with the details that are necessary so you can actually actually create what you want to create because the Leo energy is the creative sort of force, the creative, um, the creative energy, right? The creative expression. And then it's in Virgo that we deal with all the things to make it real, to make it manifest, right? Because Virgo is an earth sign. So it's a good month for creativity and then figuring out how you're gonna put your creativity out into the world. The sun spends part of its time in, uh, in Cancer, right? It moves into Cancer at the solstice on the 21st of, of um of June, which is actually when I'm doing this. I do these ahead of time so I can get all 12 done. Unlike last month when I had to do all 12 in one day and lost my voice for two days, but that's because I had just come back from Ireland and I had to catch up. Um, the sun while in cancer for you is in your house, is in the, the place of hearth and home. And then the sun moves into Leo, which is that continuation of creative self-expression. We also have Venus spending all her time in Leo. In fact, Venus on the 22nd, at the same day that the sun moves into Leo, Venus stations retrograde in Leo at about 29 degrees of Leo. And so Venus is, through her whole retrograde period, is, ha is having it in Leo. So all the creativity while Venus was in Leo uh, we get to reevaluate and then we get to put it out there. So there's all of this energy of creative expression and then perhaps an editing process and understanding. And then eventually it comes out um, as, uh, as Venus moves back forward through Leo. But that isn't happening until uh, the late summer. Um, so we have time, but this is this is the process that's happening for all of us, really. Um, Jupiter, of course, is in Taurus. That's your second house. Understanding what's of value to you, understanding your own worth and your own value. Saturn, of course, is in Pisces. Saturn just stationed retrograde. So Saturn is going to go over all those Pisces degrees that it had moved forward through. And so we're going to reevaluate uh, our work. We're going to reevaluate our sense of authority in our own life. And of course, Pisces is the house, of, uh, as it moves through Pisces, it's moving through the house of self undoing. So we really get a view of, for, it's really for all of us, but especially for you, Aries, where we sort of shoot ourselves in the foot. And perhaps we can learn something not to do that, right? We, it's, it's a lot easier walking around with two feet with one that's not shot, right? So we don't want to lose any toes in the process here. The nodes of the moon actually move from uh, North Node in Taurus, South Node in Scorpio on the 18th of July into the North Node in Aries and the South Node in Libra. We also have Pluto, which has just moved back into Aquarius a few days after the nodal shift, squaring the nodes exactly. The resolution node is the South Node in, um, in Libra. So when we're looking at uh, Pluto in Capricorn, squaring the south node in Libra. It's about taking responsibility for yourself, taking responsibility for the relationships that you're in, reevaluating those relationships and figuring out what it is that you need to let go of so that you can become your true self, north node in Aries. All right, what else is going on that I might wanna mention? 
as I said, this is not a complete uh, look at the astrology. If you really want to know a more complete picture, you can check out my astrology and Kabbalah of the month. Each week I do uh, a week. So the first week is the astrology, the Kabbalah, the numerology, the tree of life stuff, along with the first week of July. And then each uh, ne the next week and the next week and the next week will be separate videos. So you can check that out. So I sort of do the week ahead kind of videos with that. So that's a little bit more specific to what's happening at the time. But this is just a general sort of idea, but lots of creativity, uh, perhaps a few arguments over that, but you know, you're an Aries, you're, you, can, you can stand up for yourself, right? Okay, so we're gonna be using the wild unknown deck for you Aries, because you are wild. All right. And uh, then we'll also use a uh, spirit of the wheel um, oracle card. So let me just move some stuff so I can shovel up. Sorry, I just had a poppy seed bagel. <laughs> Probably should have checked my teeth before I started this. Actually, I'm in the middle of eating it, so. I'll try not to have too many poppy seeds between my teeth. Now that I said it, you're going to be looking with the fine tooth comb. Hopefully not. All right. Just a couple more shuffles. Couple more shuffles. Okay. I have shuffles. We have, we start with the Empress card, the Empress card. This is the powerful feminine goddess energy. It's about growth. It's about fertility. It's about creativity. It's about creative imagination. It is about utilizing your imagination to create your world. We also see that this tree, the, the tips of the tree is pink. And so this is about doing what you love and loving what you do. What challenge is that? Change. Things are changing. Things are changing. And you have to move with that change. Um, death is not, is not about, well, it's about letting go, but it's letting go in order to allow something new to come into your life. Let's see what's underneath it all. Um, we have the seven of cups. You're having trouble deciding what's real and what's not real. Um, so take your time with this. Take your time with this. Don't com necessarily commit completely. Maybe try a few things, see what works, see what doesn't work. Let's see what's in the past. Oh, um, well, the, in the past, you have definite opinion about what direction your life was taking you. You have built foundations um, and, and resources and connected with people who are good at what they do. So this is really a nice card to have in the past because it brings a certain amount of stability, which isn't always strong suit for Aries. Let's see what's in the sky. We have the emperor in the sky. This is about having dominion, having dominion. We also have a, a uh, an eclipse here. We just came out of eclipse season. So there may be connection to what happened during eclipse season that, um, is asking you to take responsibility for yourself. It's asking you to take responsibility. In the immediate future, okay, we still have some steps to climb. We have to be careful. The nine of um, wands is about being vigilant and, and standing your ground and, and utilizing the knowledge that you have and having, having healthy boundaries. So. This month for you is about holding healthy boundaries. See how it's seen from the outside. You're seen uh, as if you're uh, coming out of a chrysalis of some sort, that you're being reborn and that you're seeking balance. That's not a bad card. It's not a bad way to be seen. <laughs> Excuse me. Your domestic situation. Ah, something is being illuminated. The sun. The sun, this is a beautiful card for your domestic situation. It's as if the, the sun is finally shining on you. Hopes and fears. We have the mother of wands here. She's protecting her eggs, her clutch. Um, 
this could be about wanting to protect what you've what you've built, what you what you've grown here. You kind of don't want to make the wrong mistake. That's what this card, these cards are saying. You don't want to make the wrong choice. So there's no rush to choice here. Uh, it's really about being your, you know that things are going to change. You know things have to change. But right now, you just need to continue on going what, on what you've been doing. It's really just like another step forward, another step forward. And the outcome is the devil card. The devil card and the devil card, but um, you know, in this deck, the devil's feet are on fire, right? This is the devil is not necessarily a negative card. It is about uh, understanding that there is um, a way to manifest on the physical plane without getting caught up in a trap of uh, being so attached to the physical plane that it makes you do things that you that if you were in your heart, you would never do, okay? Um, it is about dominion for yourself. It is about, uh, it is the devil is a Capricorn card. And we remember we have Pluto and Capricorn squaring the nodes and the North node, and you can't move into that North node without resolving the issues about how you relate to others and how you relate to your own higher self. So, um, but it is not a negative card. I think it's a very positive card if it's used in the right, with the right intentions. So your intentions must remain to be pure. Underneath it all, we have the Ace of Swords. This is a decision that has been made, an action that has been taken. Uh, the Ace of um, cups based on um, moving away from that which no longer is 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 um, fulfilling you. And it's interesting because these two cards are very similar, are they not? And this was the past. So what fulfilled you in the past may not be fulfilling you now, and that's what caused you to make the change. And then we have the moon card. So there is going to be quite a bit of emotional ups and downs here. Um, it's important, again, the moon card and the devil card um, can be very challenging cards if you're not in, if you don't have pure intention and you're not in your, in your, in your center, if you're not in your heart and you get caught up in either the greed and avarice that is so easy to get, you know, the riches, right? The devil shows you, you can have this and you can have this and you can have this if you sell me your soul, right? That whole, that whole vibe, but you can't really sell your soul, honestly. Your soul is a whole lot bigger than your personality and it transcends this lifetime, but your personality does get challenged to, are you going to choose staying in the light or being in the darkness? Okay. And then this is just emotional ups and downs. So you might find yourself being uh, emotionally um, a little um, um, bipolar, perhaps, with this. And at the root is, is just, I think, fear of making the wrong decision. So uh, don't fear that. Don't fear making the wrong decision. You don't actually have to make a decision right now. Uh, you can look at your options. You can you can figure out your options, um, but you're growing, and you always want to choose staying in the light. That's the that's the only option really is to stay in the light. Because if you don't, um, these cards can indicate that you can that you can fall, um, and so you want to stay in your power, stay in the light, stay in your heart. Because you're going to be successful one way or the other. And it's better that you're successful through your higher vibrational um, choices. Because they, they not only bring that energy into your life now, but it also, um, it, it also is, is part of your evolutionary journey, right? So it's not just about this life. It's about this life and the many lives that come before and the many lives that will come after. Um, and your soul will be happy for it. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to pull a Spirit of the Wheel Oracle card now. It's a pretty powerful reading. 
I've done four of these so far, four or five, and they've all been very, very powerful. So it's been, it's a powerful month. July is a powerful month. Of course, with the node shifting and then the North node asking us to choose ourselves, but we first have to understand um, our relationship to others and our relationship to power. Okay, where are we here? Where did it go? Oh, here it is. All right. I'm just going to pick one of these. These are a beautiful deck that I found in, uh, or that found me when I was in Portland, Oregon, back in 2012. It was a very important time in my life. Um, visiting Portland, making friends. I did a seminar with uh, an astrologer, Patricia Walsh, to do past life regression and evolutionary astrology with a whole week in Oregon. And then it capped it off with going to Portland to that beautiful um, metaphysical um, store right there um, in the old Victorian house. Everybody who's from Portland who's watching this will know the, the, part, the place I'm talking about. Unfortunately, I can't remember the name of it, but I'm lucky I remember the name of myself these days, honestly. All right, let's see, what do we have? Higher good guidance and choice, stone of the ancestors. Stone of the Ancestors, number 14. 14 is a spiritual initiation number. Creator Destroyer. <clears throat> okay, let's see what this says. Okay, I'll hold it up for such a pretty card. Can you see that? Here we go. Stones of the Ancestors. I'm going to have to take my glasses off to read this because it's very, very small. Listen carefully to the sacred messages around you. When the spirit of the ancestors call to you, there is much at stake. The stone of the ancestor card teaches you that every decision you make and every action you take, either indirectly or directly, affects another. It is like a pebble thrown into a water, forming ripples and spreading outwards. Think long and hard about choices you are contemplating and consider the consequences for your future. At times, we have to make sacrifices to fulfill our de destiny. The ancestors help us distinguish what is worth holding on to and what we should be letting go of. If you have any doubts, call upon the ancient wisdom to help you to make the best choice. When your decisions carry purpose, a purpose beyond just the self, you can be assured that ancestors will be pleased. That does not mean giving up what you want, but it does require thinking about the ripple effects before you toss the pebble. Uh, definitely a lesson for Aries in all of us, right? We all have Aries in our chart. Self-learning is truly a lifelong process, but much heartache and pain can be avoided if we think about the long-term effects and make our choices by listening to our higher self as well as the guidance of the ancestors. And here is your prayer, Aries. Guide me, spirit of the ancestors, to know my place within this world and to be aware that everything I do affects others. Provide me with the courage to fulfill my destiny and to evolve towards the higher good. Just what your card said, guys. All right. Well, have yourself a wonderful month. Like and subscribe if you would. If you'd like to have a reading with me, there is a link below. If you uh, want to be a Patreon, there's a link below. Or if you just want to give me a thumbs up and share me, that was also great. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. I've sort of been stuck at 9888 for a while. And now finally I've gotten into 989 stuff. And so hopefully, um, maybe by my birthday, which is in, uh, this is a lot to ask. My birthday, this is solstice, today is solstice. In fact, I think right now, almost, we're almost at solstice. Um, so I have two weeks, two weeks, a week for my birthday, July 3rd. So if you guys can help me get 10,000 subscribers by my birthday, uh, I'll do something special. Maybe I'll do a live. I've never done a live. It scares the Jesus out of me. But for you guys, I'll do it. Uh, but only after 10,000 subscribers. <laughs> can you imagine? I'm holding your ransom we'll see we'll see how much you want to talk to me live okay everyone have a wonderful day and i will uh, see you next month for the taroscopes and the
uh, tarot score before the sign of Aries for the month of uh, August. Until then, be your best self. Take, take care, everyone. <laughs>